Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Alina Islam, and I'm a mining analyst here at Red Cloud Securities. I'm very pleased to introduce Mydex Resources to you today, a hard rock lithium explorer with multiple projects in Ontario. For the webinar today, we have with us key individuals from the Mydex management team, including David Jamison, Scott Young, and Tammy Lattinen. The team will provide an introduction to the company, including its most recent acquisition of the Crescent Flake project. After the presentation, we'll take your questions live. Please send us your questions via the chat box and we'll get through as many as we can. Before we get started, I do need to mention the fine print. For Midex resources, there may be some forward-looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Midex resources corporate presentation. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Midex resources specific disclosures. With that, I'll hand it over to you, David. Please take it away. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Alina. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think on this uh, presentation, so you'll notice this uh, will be a little different than our what's on our website. Um, so what we're what we're trying to accomplish today is to get across the idea of. Uh, um, that the lithium space is uh, quite a bit different than most commodities. Um, so uh, investors in gold, silver, base metals, um, uh, you know, we've had um, in Canada over 100 years of, of exploration and mining, and we've kind of come up with a, um, you know, kind of a set of uh, you know, rules or a set of uh, expectations when, when we invest in mining companies. So and exploration companies. So uh, for for the lithium space, um, I'm being specific about lithium, but you could extend it out to battery metals to some degree, is that we're in an unprecedented time where we're, we're trying to um, revolutionize the way um, we uh, use energy, the way we um, uh, used cars, uh, transportation, and it's all being compressed into a very tight amount of time uh, due to um, global warming and the way that governments are reacting uh, to climate change. So um, we're going to walk through a little bit of that before we get into um, you know, the some of the properties that Midex have and, and, and the investment thesis uh, for investing in Midex. So there's our disclaimer, as, as Alina said, there's there's a um, the same document is on the on our website. So what I'm talking about in terms of the lithium space is the the supply chain. So what we've got right now is a supply chain that's dominated by Chinese technology. Um, they essentially have developed um, the battery world as we know it in uh, in lithium batteries and, and other types of batteries. So the, the, the situation is that governments have mandated that EVs are now required um, by certain dates, 2035, 2050, et cetera, et cetera. And unfortunately, it's the time frame is so tight, so tight that we're going to have a lot of difficulties transforming our automotive sector or transportation sector to meet those those government uh, deadlines. So what's happening is that automobile manufacturers, battery manufacturers, um, other, other folks that are involved in the automotive uh, supply chain are, are scrambling. Um, they're going further and further up the chain. So upstream to find the, the materials they need to do their job. And so what we have is um, where things were sourced out into many different companies or many different um, silos. Now, what we think is gonna happen is that supply chain is gonna, get, is gonna get compressed. So where you have the automotive manufacturers really just worrying about 
um, where we're going to put our assembly plants, you know, where we get cheap labor, government handouts, and everything else will come. You know, if we build it, all those parts and everything else will just come to us, right? Everything's been established and we can get parts from all over the world. Well, now they realize um, everything is really based out of China and the rest of the world has not developed the expertise to build, uh, to create the chemicals, to build the batteries, to put into these cars. So that's, you know, that's the graphic on the left um, shows kind of the risk, the risk levels. If you leave the supply chain the way it is, and you have everything carpmetalized or siloed into the old fashioned um, uh, categories, then you're gonna run into trouble because most of the categories are gonna be controlled by China. We may be able to do the mineral exploration and the extraction, but everything else is gonna, you know, we're not, they, you lose control of it, which is which has got geopolitical um, geopolitical ramifications. So when you're investing in lithium, I think you have to look at um, the the rapid um, jockeying for position of all these companies and the investments that they will make, and, and the government is included in that. So we're going to have government support in terms of permitting. We're going to have government support in terms of loans, uh, loan guarantees, checks being written down in the states. The IRA are they're writing checks to to projects that look look like they have all the um, you know they they check all the boxes and they look like they're going to you know be able to to jump in and and produce or or um, uh, manufacture or produce chemicals. So. Um, it's it's a whole new world, and and lithium stands out in, from the other battery metals, uh, mainly because it's it's a brand new commodity. It's never really had an established um, production profile, except for uh, down in South America, and, and and somewhat in Australia. So Australia produces hard rock spodumene, uh, and of course uh, Chile and Argentina are producing the. Um, uh, the, the lithium uh, chloride um, from their from their brine deposits, but you know in the past that was more than enough to provide all the all the lithium that was needed uh, for a very you know relatively small adoption of of cars and and then the other the other uses of lithium. Now that the adopt, uh, adoption of uh, EVs is now um, accelerating probably quicker than most thought, and we just don't have the lithium. Um, and we're starting to see shortages in nickel, graphite, uh, even copper to some degree will we'll be challenged. So that's, I wanted to introduce that. I think it's some of that's been out there. Um, some of that's been out there in, in the media, but, you know, I think there's there's a lot more to it if you if you dig into it. You know, like there's going to be the other part of it. Uh, we'll go to the next slide is the ESG part of things. So the whole idea is to, you know, is to pull carbon out of the system. So we want to be able to, manu you know, not only produce EVs that are easier on the environment, but we want the materials that go into them also need to be, um, needs to be sustainable in, ter in terms of CO2 output, et cetera. So um, there, it's quite likely that, that we're going to get into a situation with blockchain, with uh, transparency, uh, protocols, uh, traceability protocols, where we're going to know where everything comes from, and we're going to know how much uh, CO2 uh, was used to produce uh, that certain uh, either commodity or part or whatever. So we also, you know, that's that's another big change in terms of the mining industry. So we need to be able to sort all that out. Uh, we need to know which deposits, you know, are able to run on um, you know, most of the mining can be done through hydropower, uh, you know, uh, on battery powered uh, large vehicles or the processing can be done using um, hydropower, solar power. And, and those are all going to be uh, traced. They're all going to be, um, you know, part of your score, your sustainability score. And it's going to get more and more um, to be a factor in terms of profitability. So. Um, you know, this slide gives you some of the points that there, there could be penalties. Um, you know, if automakers can't meet their deadlines, 
um, to to produce more EVs and gas powered vehicles. Um, we could have deficits in terms of you know where you know how we can source these, what countries are producing these these materials, and what their power base does. Does the power base for that particular jurisdiction use a lot of coal, for example? Um, so you know you've got uh, a whole lot of factors here. I think that's and, and they're all going to kind of feed into the idea that North America is is definitely going to develop its own supply chain and the supply chain right now does not does not exist um, you know we have car manufacturers we're starting to build battery plants um, but we're not up and running except for Sion in Quebec we're not up and running to start to produce the um, you know the spodumene um, uh, and the concentrates and ultimately the chemicals so I mean all that is coming So you, you can see this graphic is going to show you a little bit about what's happening in terms of um, the capital markets. So the, the one graphic shows in 2013, um, you know, lithium issuers versus the rest of the rest of the uh, exchange. 24 companies out of 1300 were uh, lithium issuers, um, the market cap of about uh, 11 billion. You jump to jump 10 years, you can see now we have 70 companies out of a smaller uh, actual pool of companies and the market cap is now uh, four times. It's uh, 44 billion. So um, we're starting to see the ramp up in capital markets. It's kind of come along since the governments have started to um, put the supports in and people have started to understand the deficit that we're going to have in lithium. So this creates a big potential for mergers, mergers and acquisitions uh, all the way up and down the chain. So we've got uh, offtake agreements happening. Uh, we've got um, uh, MOUs, uh, support agreements, collaboration, um, we've all sorts of different ways co that companies are using to try to lever off technology or, or things that they're missing in terms of expertise. Um, so company might have you know good good exploration ground, but they don't have expertise. Another company might be in a better jurisdiction for producing hydroxide. So you're going to see all kinds of deals. And then you're going to see the bigger companies. So the automakers, the battery makers, they're going to try and lock up supply. So we have offtake agreements uh, that you see announcements all the time. Um, you're even seeing agreements um, between, say, Tesla and other companies in terms of charging. So we don't have enough charging infrastructure so they did you know four deal came out two weeks ago gm a couple of days ago they're all going to be using the same charging network um so you know you've got all kinds of things going on behind the scenes and they're all important when you're thinking about investing um in uh battery uh mineral mining or exploration or more specifically uh, lithium So we'll jump into what the, the, the you know, the um, the key points for MIDEX here and, and what we're about. Um, so we have a map of, of central Canada essentially showing the deposits, uh, uh, the key deposits in Ontario and Quebec. You know, they follow the Superior Province um, and you've got deposits, uh, the one in the kind of the, the, the furthest south uh, yellow dot in Quebec, that's the Sayona deposit near Val d'Or. So that's 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 just gone into production. We have a, a, a number of other ones, Namaska, uh, James Bay. Uh, they're all undergoing fairly rapid uh, construction processes. Uh, um, and then Ontario, you've got you've got a number of deposits here that have been known. Um, some of them are, you know, they're they're being more rapidly developed than others. But um, you can see, you know, the hub here is is kind of centered around Thunder Bay. And, and we've got, um, uh, you can see up by two and three, that's the frontier, uh, that's the frontier lithium project. And um, your number one, that's, uh, that's our Crescent Lake project. That's right beside the Green Technologies um, Seymour project. And then there's a number of other projects, but nothing quite as advanced um, as what they have over in Quebec. So we've got, yeah, so number one, I said Crescent Lake, our Crescent Lake project, two and three is Barron's North, Barron's South. Those are our lithium projects up in Favorable Lake, uh, direct down strike with Frontier Lithium. 
Uh, number four is our Allison Lake project, which is a, a, an interesting greenfields uh, area that's got a number of players in it, including green technologies. Uh, our number five is, is Onion Lake. Uh, it's not, it's uh, not far from Thunder Bay. It's got, uh, it's got pegmatites uh, that uh, have been mapped out, but they haven't really been explored for lithium uh, yet. So that's kind of a greenfields project that we've picked up and are, are studying. And then number six is our Case Lake project. It's beside Power Metals uh, Case Lake project. Uh, it's in the Abitibi. It's one of the one of the few uh, projects that's been moving along um, in the Abitibi. So we've got a, um, you know, we've got a good uh, geographic spread of, of projects. We've been acquiring them since uh, 2020. So we were able to get in, um, you know, before there was a lot of staking activity. So we, we were able to actually just stake some very good ground. Um, a favorable lake. We were already there with our goal project, so it was fairly straightforward uh, just to add on to the project. So you can see the ra the rationale for Ontario. Um, just you know, if you take our Crescent Lake project for example, you can see the rail rail line and some of the road network. Um, but you've got the automotive center in southwestern Ontario and Toronto. You've got Volkswagen um, uh, coming in as a new player. But we already have uh, GM and Honda and Toyota, uh, big manufacturers in, in the GTA. Um, we've got a huge part supply um, uh, network that goes into the U.S. So that, you know, the Ambassador Bridge in Windsor, Detroit is a huge flow of, of automotive parts. And then you've got a kind of a larger manufacturing belt uh, in southern Ontario. So there's a lot of parts that get fed down into the uh, GTA automotive. And it also extends down into the U.S. And then what's going to come now is the mineral supply and, and the processing for battery uh, batteries and battery uh, chemicals. And that's going to that hub will be most likely Thunder Bay and possibly Sudbury. Uh, so those, you know, that's. You can see the, obvi the obvious uh, transportation links. You've got the Great Lakes, so you have the lake freighters uh, that can come down into U.S. Southern Ontario, and they can actually, you know, they can go at the St. Lawrence Seaway into Europe, if if need be. So it's quite likely we're going to have a, a you know a battery chemical business in in Thunder Bay, and it'll be fed from projects like the Crescent Lake. So down. Uh, we can ship concentrate uh, down into Thunder Bay and uh, all the projects in this area uh, would be able to feed a number of uh, um, chemical plants, whether they be hydroxide or, or carbonate um, producers. It's kind of a, it's actually kind of a unique situation um, in North America and possibly the world, although of course China has uh, China has quite a bit of the supply chain, as I said earlier, but they don't have the deposits is one thing they don't have. China has some very kind of poor quality uh, hard rock and some brine deposits, but um, they source the world uh, for their raw materials. So a little bit more detail on Crescent Lake. Uh, we just we just acquired uh, this project. We've been working on, a, on the deal for a number of months and we closed it about a month ago. Um, it's it's in it's got very good access. You can see there's a rail line. There's a number of roads that come up through logging roads, and we're in the middle of the um, uh, green technologies uh, project area. So the Seymour project um, sits here just to the south of our um, of our block. You can see where it says North Aubrey Target. Um, there's two other pegmatites that they've drilled off there, and they've got a global resource of almost 10 million tons of 1% lithium. And the exploration con continues at a frantic pace up there. So they've acquired additional ground, uh, the, the, the land to the east, our two projects, um, Senior or uh, Junior Lake and Falcon. And they've, um, they picked those up in, they did a deal on those in March of this year. So that'll be part of the, um, you know, the exploration plan, I think for them uh, this summer. And you can see the yellow dots are all known. Those, those are known uh, lithium bearing pegmatites. So it's a fairly large belt. Um, hadn't seen a lot of work since, you know, the fifties. There was a, a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a surge in the eighties um, when uh, courting it actually um, 
come up with a pr some pretty good uses for it in terms of glassware, glass, Pyrex, things like that. So there was a couple of little demand spikes pre uh, electric, you know, electric vehicles. And um, but but now, you know, we've got the activity is unprecedented up in that area. So a little bit closer look. Um, so our particular project, Crescent Lake, we we um, we bought it. We did a share, mainly a share deal with a company called Antler Gold. They had um, uh, they had drilled the project 20 years ago for Copper Molly. Um, had really not done much with the pegmatites that were on the uh, property. So um, they there was a short uh, drilling program of about 850 meters back in 2016. But that's about it uh, for exploration on the pegmatite trend. So we've got a little bit of data to work with. We've got four pegmatites. They've they've had a little bit of stripping, a little bit of drilling, nothing below 35 meters of depth. It's very short holes, and um, all all four of these pegmatites have shown uh, grades of over one percent, some up to three percent in a that's a surface chip, but a 1.2 meters long. And then the pictures that shows you some of the spodumene, it's either the, there's a, a pale green, uh, almost a yellow green uh, mineral in there, that's the spodumene. So, um, you know, definitely of interest in terms of coarse grained spodumene, it's, it's easier to process. So, um, you know, we've got, um, you know, these are the type of things that you're looking for when you're, when you're picking up uh, projects. So we're really excited to get get on to this. Um, we've just started our consultations with First Nations. Uh, we we want to get on the ground uh, this summer. We're just trying to we're trying to uh, finalize our, our go public process, and um, you know this is going to be really a, a key area for us. We can get in. We've uh, there's existing core up there that that we want to get in and have a look at. We want and there's you know good road access, uh, green technologies as a camp. Uh, on this road, almost um, just just a few. It looks like it's about half a kilometer from our boundaries. So, um, yeah, th this will be really straightforward to explore, and the potential there is is excellent. There's a quick look at one of the pegmatites that was stripped off in 2016. Um, I think this this is about 100 meters long by 20 meters wide. So not a not a huge amount of uh, of stripping there. There's a lot more that could be done, and uh, really not. They didn't do very much channel sampling there either. They just did a couple of a couple of cursory lines and then pop some holes in it just to see if they could uh, pull some numbers and raise more money. Now our Barron's project, we've had that for since twenty uh, since twenty nineteen twenty twenty. Uh, you can see here there's a there's a block of uh, claims in yellow. That's our that was uh, Midex's. It's our original uh, gold polymetallic project. Uh, and uh, the green is our lithium project. So they're they're contiguous uh, blocks of ground, uh, and it was kind of a, a natural progression. Uh, we'd staked uh, quite a bit of this belt um, as a regional play. It had got, gone right into the into the lithium kind of the, the high potential lithium ground that's marked by that purple fault here, and um, we uh, at, at one. I guess the, what was missing was we the gold mine in the middle. We were able to purchase that, and then as the time went on, lithium started to get, um, it, you know, it started to catch a bid. Uh, there's there was a lot of good results coming out of Frontier. So you've got they were pulling holes like this 400 meter hole of 1.8 lithium. Um, they were they were working up new resource numbers. That so there's a lot of excitement around this place. So we started to shift our attention. From the gold project into onto the lithium uh, side of things, we we kept staking claims, doing our research, picking up more ground. So that's that's the configuration you're looking at there. Um, so frontier, I think frontier is at 27,000 hectares for their lithium. We're about the same. We've got a little project down here, lithium south. We were able to acquire when some claims came open. Um, so there's this is a big trend. Um, we've got. Uh, you know, really unique pegmatites. They're very large, very good grade, uh, very low iron. So the potential here is enormous. Now we're we're a little bit further north than the other projects that you would have seen on that map. So we're about uh, 200 clicks by road from Red Lake, 
uh, and that road's a winter, uh, part of it's a winter road. So we don't have full uh, all-weather road access yet, um, but there is a power line that's coming in uh, and it, it'll be done by, by next year. So that's a quick look at our, uh, we did a prospecting program for lithium up there late last year. We had a, we had a tight window due to the hunt coming, coming in for the First Nations, but we got 10 days with a chopper. Um, basically it was, um, we had a, you know, a crew of four guys. We, we'd, uh, split them up. We, we'd, uh, essentially find a spot to land. So you can see in the bottom, right, you can see there's a, an old burn, um, or there's a little window in the trees. So we're kind of limited, limited as to location. We could put the guys in, but, you know, they were able to get out, do a little walking around, uh, take a few, take a few grab samples, uh, which is sometimes tough because you can see how flat those outcrops are. So you'd have to find an edge, but, um, but just based on that, we had, we got, we were able to get 49 samples uh, and we had some, some pretty highly anomalous numbers in lithium. So there's an example of one of the, one of the samples that we took um that one um almost uh, over 1300 ppm uh, lithium oxide um and you can see that's so a view from the helicopter window you can see these big big pegmatite whalebacks that uh, or big granite whalebacks that sit up with and uh, with pegmatite uh, large pegmatite sitting in them so the potentials there for tier 1 deposits we've got both green technologies on here with their resource down here, um, you can see it on the on the left, and then Frontiers uh, uh, Pack and Spark projects uh, measured and indicated, and they're inferred. So if you put those two together, you'd be to the you know for the far right of this of this graph, uh, starting to get up into the Siona territory in ter terms of tons. Uh, ultimately, these guys feel they can get up to 100 million tons as they start to um, drill off their third pegmatite that's known. That's the bolt. Uh, it's in between the pack and the sparks. So they want to push that. They're at 58 million ton resource right now. They want to push that up toward 100. Um, so you can see it's, you know, it's a head and shoulders top of the class. So this gives you a, a kind of a, a quick view of what we're going to do once we get uh, public. And it, it includes all of our projects. So... Crescent Lake and Barron's are kind of our 1A, 1B in terms of flagships. But we also have Allison, um, Onion, and Case. And they all have their own characteristics. They're all, they all have uh, quite a bit of potential. And they have really had seen very limited exploration work. So we want to we wanna bring everything along. So you'll see phase one is often LIDAR or till sampling or, or early stage prospecting. And then that'll segue, you know, into channel cuts, uh, more detailed mapping and prospecting, um, you know, more generally more detailed sampling as we narrow in on, on some of the better areas or some of the better pegmatites to, to work on. And then that will segue into uh, drilling programs. Um, and we'll, you know, ultimately the ideal thing would be to, you know, generate drill, pro, drill targets on all of our projects and, and, just, and just rank them out. Um, logistics are a little different at Barron's and say they would be at Onion. Onion's just outside of Thunder Bay. So we can almost stay in Thunder Bay and, and drive up to Onion. Uh, Barron's, we may need to use one of the, the construction camps that are up there or stay in the community. Case Lake's in the Abitibi. There's excellent infrastructure there. So again, that's, that's really straightforward in terms of exploration. So we've got, you know, we've got a whole bunch of different logistics there. Uh, it's, it's kind of important. Everybody's talking about fires. Uh, sometimes the west will be having issues with fire, sometimes the east. Right now it's the east, although there was, Tim says there was not any smoke up in Timmins right now. A lot of it's in Quebec. But it's important to kind of have that geographic diversity because you may not always be able to work when you want to work. I know two years ago, Red Lake uh, was shut down for, for quite a while due to fires. Um, so there's our timeline, Q2. Uh, we're doing our public transaction. We've already closed um, Crescent. That was a material property. And Q3 is we're moving in, you know, getting public, moving into the expiration phase. We're still compiling data. We're writing a, a, a 43101 on, on Crescent. Um, we're still evaluating acquisitions and deals, um, staking. And then Q4, we, you know, we get into the the 
more the uh, drill planning phase. Uh, we do, you know, targeting exercises, ranking priorities and logistics about, uh, you know, figuring out best times to get in on the ground. Barrens with the winter road, obviously it's to get in there in the winter and do your drilling. But a lot of the other, these other projects are all excellent road access. So, we, uh, you know, it's 12 months of the year, uh, more or less is, um, is available to us in terms of working. And here's the team at Midex. So um, we've got, you know, we've got a well-rounded team. I'm a geologist by trade. Uh, worked, I've worked for many junior companies uh, on the technical side and on the, uh, not so much on the capital markets, but but in some cases. Um, we got Scott who raises the money. He's on the call. And uh, he's been in capital markets for, for decades. Uh, came in early on the when we were when we were raising money uh, um, to get the company off the ground. Uh, Tammy Lettinen's on the call, and she's um, you know it, when it comes to First Nations permitting, uh, you know she's got a ton of experience uh, in grassroots and advanced projects. She's based out of Thunder Bay, which is you know most of our projects will be based out of there. She knows the many of the First Nations that uh, that we'll, that we're dealing with. She already has a, a very good track record with them. Um, uh, Doug Harris, again, capital markets, lots of expertise, junior companies. Uh, he's also um, uh, well, he's a CEO, part time CFO for Grid, Grid Metals, which is looking at lithium in Manitoba. And then our directors, very well rounded. Uh, Terry and Andreas come over from Talisker um, and uh, a lot of good capital markets experience there. Terry's got his, his uh, PhD in structural geology. Um, John, again, good capital markets experience. Uh, Glenn was the founder, uh, excellent experience in Northwestern Ontario logistics. And then Glenn Baldwin's uh, an Aussie, uh, a mining engineer, excellent uh, experience in all kinds of deal making and capital markets. So, um, you know, we've, we've got a, a really good well-rounded team that, that, that covers the bases. Just a quick look, uh, peer review. So we've put up uh, some companies that were directly beside. So these are all Ontario-based focused companies. So you see Frontier and, and Green Technologies and Power Metals. Those are three projects at Case, uh, Barron's and uh, Crescent that were, um, you know, were cheap by gel with. And then a couple of other players in uh, Northwestern Ontario, Critical uh, Resources is near Dryden, Rock Tech is near is Georgia Lake. And then ourselves. So you see the market caps. This is our kind of our uh, our market cap. We're in the middle of financing, so that market cap will be closer to 13 as we start to raise money. We're raising money at a, a 15 cents, 17 cent uh, flow, whereas these raises uh, previously were at a dime. So that's where that eight million market cap comes from. And um, yeah, you can see the acreage. I mean, we're we're right up there with with all these guys in terms of uh, overall hectares. Uh, and we have quality ground too, um, so that's uh, and we're ge geographically diversified. So it's kind of a unique situation for us um, as a as a private company. And there's our cap table, so you can see um, that we are fully diluted. So you can see where our, our our current shares are. So at a dime, that's that's where the eight million comes from. Um, uh, warrants, uh, we just put in place a, um, an option uh, program. It's, it still uh, has to be approved by shareholders. Uh, a few property agreements, I guess, it, and it's another good point. Most of our ground has been staked. So the, the property agreements that we have are, are, are relatively few and small, except for the, the Barron's Gold Mine that we, that we bought. Uh, the Crescent Lake deal is, is another one, but we, we issued shares for that one. Um, so that that's going to go up uh, once once we're all once all the, the these transactions have settled out. Um, yeah, so you've got you know you've warrants and options, um, and I think the key thing here is that insiders, so management uh, directors, uh, we're still in that twenty to twenty five percent range in terms of uh, ownership of the company. So as a as a privco, we've done three rounds at ten cents uh, over the over the past two and a half three years, and and uh, uh, we've maintained our, you know, we've written checks on all those financings internally. Yeah, so that's it. Um, discovery, delineation, and expansion. And uh, yeah, it's kind of unique. We were in New York. We had a number of folks 
uh, want to come see us because we were the only private company in the whole show. So they wanted to know our story. So happy to take some questions. Well, thanks a lot, uh, David. That was a very informative presentation. So we'll start the Q&A portion of the webinar now. Just as a reminder uh, to our participants, you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. So we do have a couple of questions here, David. Um, let's start off with maybe Crescent Lake first. You know, you had a good project with Barron's, very um, uh, promising, favorable ju jurisdiction. So can you talk about the rationale behind the Crescent Lake acquisition? Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't really touch on touch on that in the in the talk, but um, um, yeah, the geographic diversification is important. Um, the other thing that's important is is timelines and, and different types of uh, of projects. So um, at at Barrens we have. Um, you know, we're, we're right beside and have almost as much ground as, as Frontier, and they've got a tier one deposit um, and, and, that, and likely more more deposits that will that, be of unique characteristic in terms of size, grade, and, and quality. Um, so it's unmatched in North America. Um, the but but there's a little bit of a time delay there because we, we need a little bit more infrastructure to come. The, the power line is is you know 18 months away uh the road there's there's been a lot of engineering etc but the road still is, is going to be important um if you look at frontiers pre fees they're they're planning on using um you know i think they're going to use um the winter road um to transport which is which is quite doable um but there's a cost involved in that and the you know logistics for us up there um, are not bad. I mean the Ballard camps are, are quite handy to use. Um, it's a little bit like James Bay, I guess, where you have those construction camps uh, in, in certain locations. The crescent though adds a whole different wrinkle. So we've got pegmatites on there that um, have barely been touched, but they're known. So we know that we have lithium grade in a number of pegmatite uh, occurrences. And we have excellent access, and we're beside uh, Green Technologies, which is racing to get their um, product to market. So not only a concentrate, but a hydroxide or a carbonate product. And they have the ability to do that. They, they come out of that side of the business. So Primero is a big construction mining uh, company in Australia. And they, they're building a hydroxide plant down in Australia right now. So... Um, we see, you know, we saw that as huge um, and the, uh, you know, to, to get that kind of speed to market and uh, an obvious place to get our, our product out if, you know, it's early days, we don't have a product yet, but as we drill things off and we, we come up with a resource and do some metallurgy, then we have the next step is, is very visible, right? So that's a that's a huge value add for an for an exploration company to to kind of check the boxes, um, and then you know Barons is going to come. I mean we've got we've got some big pegmatites up there that we've identified, and they're they're quite anomalous in lithium, and they seem they would look to have similar characteristics, right, in terms of uh, the way they they occur. Uh, so we have the same geology, the same structure, the same um, kind of. Uh, Fertile granites and pegmatites is, is what's at frontier. So I think that's the difference. Um, that's why we thought it was important. We could have gone public uh, on what we had at Barron's, but we just felt having that one-two punch was um, was important. And in some respects, it's opportunistic. I mean, the project was, the Crescent project was offered to us um, we had to make a decision to slow down or go public and, and, and do the deal or try to leave it, leave it out there and come back to it. But we felt the quality was, was so high, we wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been there when we came back to it. So we, we pulled the trigger, um, to avoid missing out. Right. Okay. So, um, you know, a bit of historic drilling already present on the Crescent property, but what would you look to do in the next, you know, few months? Yeah, I think we want to get, um, 
we want to characterize each one of those pegmatites. So we need to get we need to get a couple of geos in there, um, having a look, and then get the permitting underway. So you need you know you need to have a plan when you do you know you need to plan your work when you you, you apply for permitting. So um, and uh, so we, uh, we can we can start channel cutting. We obviously you know um, you don't need permits for that and prospecting to try to, you know, let's see what the potential is. There's like an eight kilometer uh, trend between the pegmatites that, that are known and the, um, uh, the the Aubrey pegmatites that GT1 is looking at. So there's areas there that have obvious um, potential to, to just to prospect and, uh, or, or do some geochemistry. So we're gonna do multi, multi kind of, uh, uh, be a multidisciplinary, I guess, approach, but um, we want to bring those pegmatites, you know, up to a resource as quick as we can. If if it looks like the size is there, and I know one of the pegmatites is, you know, it's 100 meters long that has been exposed, and uh, you know the drilling's only gone down 35 meters, but it it there's still pretty good uh, spodumene down there, and. If you look at other projects, that that tends to be, you know, these things. No reason they don't go to depth. So there's a ton of potential there. We want to make sure we do it right. So the First Nations are going to be, we're, they're going to know we're going to be very transparent, and the drilling will be done, you know, to extremely high standards. So we're not going to rush it that way. But as soon as we can get, um, you know, that drill on the ground and 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 start building up. Um, a resource on what's known and then finding other ones because I think that's the key is to get that tonnage up um, to where you know an offtake agreement might make sense and, in, and, and get enough material for metallurgical and uh, that kind of thing. Okay so you mentioned First Nation communities David have you had any initial conversations or has there been any, been any dialogue with them? Yeah I, Tammy if you want to jump in uh, yeah, great question, Alina. Uh, so, uh, like Dave May, we completed this acquisition about a month ago, um, and so immediately upon upon that successful completion of the acquisition, we reached out to the communities. Um, so th those meetings will be taking place very shortly, um, and you know these are groups that have seen economic development in their area seem to be open to mineral resource development and participation. So we're, we're looking forward to those conversations. Okay, all right, great. Um, <clears throat> just on your uh, go public transaction, David, um, are you going public on the CSC or TSXV? It'll be on the Venture Exchange, TSX Venture. Okay, all right. Um, a bit of a broader question here. Um, if you have to look at a strategic partner, what might you prefer, an auto OEM battery maker or larger lithium company? Is the question, would we or who would we consider? Uh, I mean, who would you consider, I guess? What type of partner might you prefer is the question. Yeah, it's it's a really good question. So, so Green Technologies just did an offtake with LG in Korea. Um, so basically, you know, they've, they've just, uh, Green Technology just put out a 10 million ton resource at, um, at Seymour and, uh, which is beside us at Crescent. And, and that was 20 million bucks for a 25% offtake of just that one deposit. So, um, there's a metric there that, um, uh, that seems, and now we don't know the details of that agreement it's still being hammered out, right? There could be, you know, price in uh, it's a price index. There's a whole bunch that goes into it, but that seems to me to be the way to go. Um, you know, there's royalties out there. Companies are, are grabbing royalties. Um, it's traditional with, with gold and silver, um, but it can get you, unless you really understand what you're doing there, you can get into a little bit of trouble. So, um i kind of like that that model so you're now that that would be battery companies right that would be battery companies that you'd be doing the deal with um uh i think there's other deals that can be made as well so i think with and it's happening with uh what would generally be competitors 
in in other sectors the gold gold based metals they're they're teaming up um because we do have things like labor shortages we have uh uh obviously we have first nations in common like at frontier we we talk to them from time to time um and tammy and her, her counterpart at frontier about um you know how we're we're approaching things so there's more cooperation i think and in general we're the you know the the government is is helping you know they're trying to streamline everything here we're trying to we're doing this as quick as we can so there's going to be more loose partnerships um and, but we're, we're seeing other ways to finance rather than the typical uh, equity market thing so the offtakes are important uh, government grants government supportive exploration programs is important um and logistical uh agreements or even they may, may even be ad hoc with with other companies so that's the way i look at it i don't necessarily think we we have to get you know do a, a, a traditional merger but i i think there's going to be ways to finance and certainly the cooperation will be there because i don't think we want to move we're certainly not going to move into the chemical part right i mean if green technologies is going to do that if frontier is going to do that then then we'll have deals with them right so we're that's the way we look at it we've got lots of good exploration ground let's let's get some resources um we could do earn-ins or farm outs as well we've done that on our gold projects we farmed out um, our sturgeon gold project um to get it off our plate and um yeah so i think that we're we built the company on deals like a lot of it's staking but again that's that's research staking ground um doing deals when you need to and when opportunities come up you certainly evaluate them and we got a team that can we've got like good capital markets guys and uh, like i said we've got some you know with andreas and terry at um and and glenn that we've got guys that can evaluate this stuff all right sounds good um so another question here uh every junior says they have a high quality lithium prospect how do you know your targets are highly prospective well, the, yeah, we're we're running off of a program at Crescent that ran in 2016, um, where we've evaluated the data. We think it's good data. Um, it's done by a reputable lab with the right type of assaying. Um, there's good visual in terms of spodumene. So that's high quality. You don't get much higher quality than that. Um, and then the, the Barron's one is the, the proof will be in the pudding. Uh, the geology uh, gods have blessed that belt with some of the best uh, geology for for lithium pegmatites in North America. So um, we've got to, you know, we've got to prove that that we can find them. Um, and, you know, we've sort of shown that the geology is very similar on our ground as to what they have at Frontier. So um, now it's up to us to find them and delineate them and see how big, how big they, you know, if the grade's going to come up and, how big they, we, we know the size is there. We see that size, which is really unique to that belt, you know, like three, 400 meter intercepts of, of above 1% lithium is just, you know, it's top of the class anywhere in the world. So, I mean, that's, I think we can say that without, you know, without blushing that, um, you know, we've got some of the best, best targets in, uh, in Ontario. Right. Um, do you have any royalties on your properties? No, none of the lithium has any royalties on it. Um, the Crescent deal, some of the project areas have royalties, but that was mainly on the Molly Copper showing. Um, and then there's one block uh, in the southwest corner that has a royalty on it. But uh, so, you know, if they come up, if there's lithium there, then that would have a royalty, but anything we have. So all the barons, all the other projects were acquired. The lithium parts were acquired via staking. And um, most of the gold projects as well were acquired via staking. Um, and then a couple of the deals we made have no, so the deal we made with Antler at Crescent, there's no royalty involved in that. It's simply underlying royalties. And then at the same at Barron's, when we bought the gold mine, there was no royalty on that deal either. Uh, but there's underlying royalties. Alana, let me jump in there if I can. I'm sort of sick of looking at myself, looking so good on this call. <laughs> um, so I wanted to say something when when the question came along about how do we know that we've got good 
good lithium ground. Um, one of the most important investment cases for Midex for myself and my shareholders is the fact that we now can say we have ore grade lithium on the Crescent Lake property. One of the cool things about the situation of Crescent Lake is it's right beside Green Technologies. And we believe Green Technologies is going to be the first lithium company in production in Ontario. They're, they're, they're really ramping things up. One of the great things about the Australians is they really move fast and, and we're, we're watching them move fast and it's, it's up to us to follow through with them. So you got a situation where that company has about a $200, $250 million market cap and we can see the trends of lithium coming right onto our property. You got another situation where we've got the most ground outside of frontier lithium. And we see the trend, there's a 130 kilometer trend of lithium bearing pegmatites and they go right onto our block. And the cool thing about that is that Frontier has a four to $500 million market cap. So as an investor, you're sitting there looking at the properties that we have. I think Dave made a really good case for the people that are involved in this company. And you got a $13 million market cap company that's beside some of the best lithium folks in Ontario. And we believe the Frontier Lithium properties probably are the best deposits for lithium in North America. And I think that's been proven. So we've got a really good opportunity here at this price, knowing the company's on its way to go public sometime, hopefully in August. And uh, we're getting a lot of traction. We were just down in New York, as Dave said, that was, I love working with the Americans because at the end of a meeting, you know whether, where you stand with them. And I'd say 70% of the folks that we met said, we really like this company. We want to go further with it. So really, really exciting times for Midex. Yeah, no, uh, I agree with that. I mean, there's a lot to look forward to with both your Crescent Lake and, and Barron's project. So very exciting. Um, I'm just going to take a moment to flip back to um, something that David said. David, you were talking about the gold assets, and, and we've uh, had a question come in. Can you talk about the gold projects and what your plan is? Like, are you going to ignore the gold assets going forward and focus primarily on lithium now? Uh, I wouldn't say ignore, but we're, we're laser focused on lithium. Um, and you know, the gold, like I said, we farmed out sturgeon, um, uh, and that's to a, to a major and that seems to be going pretty well. Uh, we've still got a, we, we've got a project called dark water that's adjacent to sturgeon. It's permitted for drilling. Um, uh, it's, it's got a lot of potential uh, and we've had a lot of people kick tires. We've, we put out some CAs on them. We're, we're willing to, to farm them out. Um, Barron's. Because it's cheek by jowl, contiguous with our lithium, um, we have signed a CA. We have had folks look at it. Um, we're in the middle of permitting, uh, doing a. We put a, a, a large uh, drill program permit in, and uh, there's some work that needs to get done by the government in terms of rehab there. But if we get that permit, you know, I, I we would partner up or or we'll wait. Um, you know, we'll wait for um, the mar the gold market to improve although to me the price is high enough i know that the canadian uh, mid-tier and majors are, are are doing quite well and you know they're they're looking around for projects like i said we we got called we took the phone call at sturgeon we didn't we weren't actively shopping it same with barons we've had people approach us so um, we just have to be smart about it we know it's a great asset at barons and we're also cognizant of the fact that when the power line is done and the road is in there, the value of that uh, increases exponentially, so. All right, well, we're getting to the top of the hour here. So uh, that's it for the Q&A portion of the webinar. Uh, David, Scott, and Tammy, thank you so much for uh, taking time to host this webinar with us today. Just as a reminder for our audience, our next webinar will feature Sun Summit Minerals, and that's on June 19th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Thanks for tuning in with us, everyone. Have a great day.
Thank you. Thanks, Elena.